What's up, Chargers fans? Welcome back to the Guilty as Charged podcast. Half the team is on the COVID list right now, or they're injured. So we're going to talk about some guys that need to step up or some ways that the defense can manufacture some pressure because they're going to be out a lot of players. Joining me again is Gavino from Chargers Wire. Gavino, how you doing, man? Good, man. Yourself? Uh, I'm doing just fine. Just rounding out the end of my internship and all that. So uh, feeling good about things. Can't wait to watch this. Um, seems like there's some promising stuff right here. So dive right in. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and touch on Jerry Tillery for five plays. So it seems like whenever he plays the Chiefs, he ends up having a good game. <laughs> yeah. We saw it last week. Um, so he did some promising things as a pass rusher and a run defender. I've got three plays to show you against as a pass rusher and then two against the run. So the first one he's going to be going against uh, left guard right here. So he is going to hit him with a two-hand swipe. Um, and he's going to go into a rip. So my biggest thing is if you clear the hands, you clear the man. And he clearly does that here. So he's going to attack the gap right here. So he's going to clear hands. So he's going to swipe those. And he's going to hit him with a rip to his left arm to clear them all together. Good job cornering right there. Gets the hit in complete pass. Does a great job right there. Next, he's going to be going up against the right guard now. So this is going to be a chop club to rip. So he does a good job getting up field again. So he's going to go chop to the hands right there. He's going to go club and then he's going to go rip and he's still working against some working feet. Get some pressure and then good job of Joey Bosa. So I'll go ahead and backtrack that to show you what Bosa does right here. So he's just going to go speed to power with a long arm to generate some pressure as well. Collapse the pocket there. And we have an incomplete pass. Next one here is a screen play, but um, it still goes to show how quick he gets up the field. Um, but also Joey Bosa contributes to this here, just blowing, blowing up the play um, all around. Great job up front. So going up here, he's he gets hands on him. Again, you can see the running back coming up field. Joey Bosa blows him up basically. Same thing with Justin Jones here. But just look how quick uh, Jerry Hillary gets upfield. So Mahomes has nowhere to go, has to throw it in the dirt. So promising stuff there. When the Chargers drafted Hillary, it was to supply that interior mm -hmm. pass rush in between Melvin Ingram and Joey Bosa. So that's what he was originally drafted for. Coming out of Notre Dame, he wasn't the most promising run defender. Right. Um, that's what he gets knocked on a lot. But clearly, like, it seems like each game he has, like, one or two good reps as a pass rusher. Mm -hmm. You see that right there. So he did a good job working some pass rush moves. He's quick, um, which we'll see in a couple of plays here of how quick he is to just get upfield. But, again, it's just primarily his strength, which I'm going to show you right here, just mm -hmm. holding his own at the point of attack. Um, typically, he's, he just gives up his back quite a bit, and that right. just takes him out of plays. And uh, offensive linemen have no issue with clearing some lanes. So he's going to be on this first run play. He's going to be right here. Um, he's going to initially attack the tight end right here. So he's going to hold the zone at the point of attack. Great job all around. So we have Nwosu on the corner. This running back's going to have nowhere to go all, to, all around. But again, this is typically where Tillery's going to give some ground up. So uh, it doesn't matter tight ends, guard, tackle. They typically um, are able to get him upfield, generate some push. But he holds his own right here at the point of attack. You can see right here, he has no lane all, um, all together. So a great job up front by um, like clogging that hole. Tillery ends up making the play. Same thing with Nwosu. So they get their gain of three yards, I believe. And right here, this is towards the end of the game. This is a beautiful goal, goal line stand. Huge. PFF gave us 73.1 grade in the run defense department. I think this had a lot to do with it. Hmm. So he look how quick he is just to work laterally, avoid this. Looks like a chop block that he's trying to go with. So boom, clears those hands, just clears the body all to, all together. Gets up field, makes a stop. I believe Trey Marshall is right there. Prevent him from going to the end zone. So that's all I got for Tony wow. right there. But five plays to illustrate what he did a good job of um, as a pass rusher and as a run defender. We can see there. Um, um, he didn't get blown off the ball as much um, all around. You know, there was more plays, obviously, but it just goes to show that uh, he can hold his own. I know he uh, he gets knocked on a lot as a player, and it's primarily 
his uh, how he does um, against the run. Mm-hmm. He's a promising pass rusher, and we can see like um, in prior weeks that he's doing a good job of generating pressure all around. So he's kind of coming into his own. And again, you got to understand that this is a new system for him. So he's just getting used to that. Yes, you can say it's it's year three, but you got to remember in his rookie season, he dealt with that uh, labrum injury. So he didn't really have much of a of a um, preseason altogether. And again, he's finally starting to put the pieces together. Um, so promising stuff from Tillery. And like yeah. I said, it seems like he gets the Chiefs. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he has his field day. So, yeah, no kidding. I mean, this is not exactly a scrub interior offensive line either. So, but I can't believe he had one of his best games of the year against arguably the best interior line he's played all year. So, you know, good for him. That's fantastic. And, you know, some of these early draft picks, whether it be in Wosu or Tillery, are starting to look like they're heating up and starting to answer some questions. And if you can just have a couple of more reliable guys where you don't have to reach for a pick, maybe you can go elsewhere, maybe something even kind of fun like a wide receiver. I don't know. Um, for them to be able to step up in this way is huge. So I'm, I'm really happy to see this from Tillery. Last week, he showed me a little bit from Tillery against the Giants as well, and that looked really good too. So I'm happy to see that there's just some good things um, building for him right now. Next, um, I've got three plays. So I'm going to kind of show some fun blitz packages with two being from Chris Harris. So he ended up with two pressures and two quarterback hits. So they utilized him. Um in that way. Um, I was curious to see going into the game, like how he was going to match up. Again, you have these fast receivers of the chiefs um, where they're going to put them uh, one-on-one situations. But um, when rewatching the tape, um, they actually used him as a blitzer. So that was promising to see. And he actually got home. Uh, Cause I know Chris Harris Jr. is another guy that uh, fans aren't too, too fond of. It's more so how he does in coverage, but um, it seemed like they used him in blitz packages. And uh, again, just goes to show that Brandon Staley is getting creative with those pressure packages all around. So the first one, um, you can't really see from this angle, but he's going to be show, he's going to be off into the slot. Uh, Joey Bosa right here is going to draw the attention of the, the guard right there. So he's going to hit the gap right here, which gives him a one-on-one situation with this tackle. Chris Harris Jr. is just too quick to, so he's able to get around. He's able to get that pressure on him. Of course, it's Patrick Mahomes, so he evades it. And then you have a wide open Travis Kelsey right there. Not a good looking coverage, but again, you can see how quick um, Chris Harris Jr. was to get home. Um, he definitely impacted that play, but again, Patrick Mahomes, uh, you have to bring him down. That's the biggest thing. You can't just like get your hands on him, expect for him to go down. He's going to be able to evade that pressure, but regardless, the fact that he was able to beat that offensive tackle with Joey Bosa crashing that gap, perfect play just weren't able to execute all the way. This next play, so it's gonna show two things. It's gonna show one, how Chris Harris Jr. was as a uh, blitzer, but it's also gonna show Kenneth Murray as a pass rusher. No. Um, so as we know, he's made the full-time transition to the edge position and um, he hasn't made any plays at his, at his new position. And this play is gonna perfectly illustrate why he isn't getting home and that's just because he gets too far up the field. As a pass rusher, especially in this league, if you take yourself out of the plays by just getting going too far up the field, good luck. Especially uh, with the quarterback against Patrick Mahomes and all that. It's just it's not a good look. Um, and, you, again, you're going to have a lot to work on. And at first, like, I was going to give him a shot. I was going to give him a shot, like, at, at the edge position. Uh, seeing how he did at Oklahoma, mm-hmm. he did a good job of just going up the field, just winning with speed to power. But it seems like he's trying to win around the edge. And, again, with him running the arc, you'll see here that he's just going to go up the field and just basically take himself out of the play. But regardless, we have uh, Chris Harris Jr. lined up in uh, man coverage here. So he's going to be taking on this tight end right here. You have Kenneth Murray on the opposite side. And we can just kind of just go to show how far he gets up the field while Chris Harris Jr. does his job. He takes on the the, uh, tight end here, kind of wins with a – a slight kind of like a chop uh, move to clear him. Look how far Kenneth Murray gets up the field. So he's basically taking himself out of the play. The offensive line, they're still chasing him, but they're wondering what is he doing? So he, Chris Harris Jr. has a straight line to get to him. But look how far Kenneth Murray is up the field. So he took himself out of the play. They didn't have to do anything mm-hmm. by blocking him. He's trying to run the arc, but he just runs himself out of the play. Chris Harris Jr. has a free play. He's able to get that quarterback hit. But again, just look how far 
Kenneth Murray yeah. is wow. here versus um, Chris Harris Jr. You run that play through a couple more times just so I can watch Chris Harris Jr. and then obviously yep. Kenneth Murray. Man, right, good for Chris Harris, though. I didn't really, you know, I usually just see him kind of as a, as a free blitzer, and, you know, quarterback is a hot read or something. Yeah, and but... I, I was curious to see how they're going to draw plays to get to, to pressure Mahomes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chris Harris Jr. Was, was the guy. So I'll run this through again. We can see he's trying to win up with, uh, with some speed. He's trying to clear hands, but he's still working his feet. But look. Rather than going and working up here vertically, he is still trying to run this arc, so he's taking himself out. Meanwhile, Chris Harris Jr. is completely aware of where Patrick Mahomes is. Mm -hmm. so he's just clearly out of this play. Yeah. Meanwhile, Chris Harris Jr. has just a free uh, hit on Mahomes. But Kenneth Murray, man, I mean, I think people are mm -hmm. starting to pick up on that too. Right. Uh, you see people tweet about it and um, there it was easy to pick up on is that he just takes himself out of plays because he can't necessarily run the arc the proper way. Um, sure, he's going to stay clean, but when you're that far up into the backfield, you're not going to have an opportunity mm -hmm. to make a play. So what do you do with him at this point? I know we're not this is not a Kenneth Murray breakdown, but, you know, this play is is all over the place. It's pretty easy to just watch any rep. And that's why he has. I think zero pressures and two missed tackles and no tackles the last two games. It's not like you said, he's not making any plays in his full-time switch the last two games. And that's true. So like, what, I mean, what do you do? Like, is he, is it coach? I mean, obviously it's coaching and he'll need time. Don't get me wrong. Like I know he'll need time coaching and off season, all that, but like, what can they do right now? I mean, there's just, I mean, it just really needs to kind of be egg bully at this point. Right. Yeah, it seems like he's trying to do too much. Um, mm. One, it doesn't seem like he has the power, uh, the counters to clear himself completely. Right. And again, when he's just trying to run the, the arc, he's not aware of where the quarterback is or he feels like he has the bend, mm. which he doesn't be able to um, create a lane to get to the quarterback. So there's not a lot going for him at the position right now. I can understand the transition or why the coaches made him to the edge because when he was at linebacker, he was struggling to get off of blockers altogether. He was yeah. just running himself out of play. He was struggling to diagnose. So there was just a lot wrong at this position when we had these um, high expectations for him going into the season. So it's going to be a full off season of work. I don't expect it to get any better um, this season wow, okay. because again, that's a lot of stuff that needs to be coached up. Yeah. And when we look at this, when you have Kenneth Murray joining that edge defender group, it kind of just goes to show how thin the group is all together. Mm, because mm -hmm. we're the possibility of Chris Rumpf being out too. I don't know if he's vaccinated or not. But if he's out, you're looking at Uchenna Nwosu, um, Kenneth Murray, and Emeka Igbule because Emeka Igbule was the only player that they kept onto mm. the, on the practice squad. So you're, you're thin there. Um, and with the plays that I'm illustrating or I'm showing here, it's just to kind of illustrate what the Chargers might uh, do against the Texans. Mind you, the Texans offensive line isn't on the same caliber of the, of the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. but, but again, they need to be able to get to Davis Mills. Davis Mills, a rookie quarterback, um, and it starts up front. Mm -hmm. And when you're thin at that position, you're not going to get much production. And you have a guy in, uh, in Brandon Cooks who I could see it. Um, taking over this game mm -hmm. and if we're not getting any pressure uh we're, you know chargers fans always say like we uh make these um you know below average quarterbacks look <laughs> like superstars yes we don't want that again um when you have an Uwosu, that helps mm -hmm. but behind them there, there's nothing but just going back to murray there's a lot that needs to be worked on because when you have a in-season transition like that i don't expect it to be 100 percent perfect um you know, I think we're looking at a situation where fans are expecting Micah Parsons, you know, him <laughs> making the transition from linebacker at Penn State to edge defender. They're saying like anything's possible. They're expecting Kenneth Murray to be the superstar off the edge, but <laughs> clearly that's not the case. Um, Micah Parsons coming out of college, I knew that he was going to be better as an edge defender mm -hmm. given his skill set. With Kenneth Murray coming out of Oklahoma, yes, he was meant to. Um, play downhill but uh, I didn't really and you know come off the edge occasionally but I didn't envision the uh, the position change um, altogether and that's what mm. we're seeing here and it's just going to take an off season because I don't anticipate the Chargers trading him either 
Mm -hmm. um i think popper said too that don't expect the team to trade kenneth murray right i don't see it happening um the linebacker depth would just be thin or edge defender so um again uh it's not their mo to be trading guys like that no matter like the struggle and same thing guys that are on like the the verge but are still under contract like a, a jerry tillery i don't expect them to to move uh, move him altogether but Kenneth Murray is probably uh, the least productive defender um, on the roster. And again, uh, he's got a lot of work to do. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, hoping for the best for him, hoping all the players are making any transition or new scheme and all that. It's just, uh, yeah, expectations were not met to say the least. And it's unfortunate that it, 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 really, it really is a personnel thing because mm -hmm. when you look at it, it was a run defense at the beginning of the season then we mm -hmm. have the, the mm -hmm. pass defense struggling a little bit too, but I think we're just starting to see the, the lack of depth. And it seems like, um, you know, throughout the season, we saw that one, uh, the team needs interior defenders. Uh, there was a point where they just weren't getting home with their edge defenders, mm -hmm. the, the cornerback depth, um, that's still pretty evident. Um, so we're starting to see these holes and, you know, going into this game against the Texans, like if, if Bose is not, well, he's clearly not available, but if uh, Chris Rumpf isn't playing, um, you're looking at a group. And then with Nwosu being a free agent after the season, this is going to be – and then Fackrell, too. Um, I don't <laughs> anticipate them bringing him back because, shoot, if he, if he was still available, that would help. But uh, mm -hmm. I totally forgot that has been out, uh, too. So I think we're just starting to see these holes all around, and that kind of just brings up a point, which is a totally different conversation, which we'll get to in the offseason, I'm sure. sure. Uh, yeah, the Chargers have – quite a few holes um, on both sides of the ball, but uh, edge defenders were one of them. And when we're relying on, we're giving Kenneth Murray over 30 snaps to uh, try to get to the quarterback. Um, something's wrong there. Yeah, no, absolutely. All right. Let, let's see some let's transition to something positive here. Let's see something cool. Let's see, let's see a good blitz yeah. package here. So just going back to what I was talking about with the um, blitz pressure packages and all that. Um, one, I was curious to see how it was going to go or look going into the game, but also we may see more of this next week when we play, when they play the Texans. So we have Kaiser white right here. So he's going to be uh, threatening to, um, to blitz the quarterback right here. We have drew tranquil. So he's playing in the middle of the uh, defense here. So we're actually going to have Kaiser white drop and cover this running back. And then uh, drew tranquil is going to take this gap. Um, meanwhile, we get pressure from Joey Bosa here too. Um, so I'll go ahead and run this through and I'll pause it as we go. So right here, boom, we have one-on-one -on -one with Creed Humphrey and Drew Tranquil. Uh, Kaiser Wright's going to be picking up this running back. We have Joey Bosa. He's going to be hitting him with a, a chop move to clear hands. He dives. He unfortunately doesn't get to him, so it clears up this gap right here. But we can kind of just see this pressure, mm -hmm. you know, because I was curious to see how the Chargers were going to generate this pressure without sending the, the entire house. Um, again, Kaiser White has him picked up right there. Drew Tranquil gets some pressure. Um, and then this just this is going to show effort by Nuchenna Wosu and Justin Jones, I believe, to chase him down. Look at, look at Nwosu. Look at that closing speed. And that's that's a guy right there who had a good who had himself a good game, and he's going to be absolutely needed against the Texans uh, without Joey Bosa. But mm -hmm. let me just run that play back because it kind of just goes to show. Look how fast he gets home. And from how far away? So he was off the edge right there. Yeah, I mean, wow. So he knows that he's taken off, but just look at that. <laughs> That's some, and then of course. <laughs> yeah, completion. well, that whole, whole other completion. whole other video. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's great. man, one player that I didn't hit on um, that had himself a game, one was just getting his hands on the ball was Nichen mm -hmm. He had that pass defense, which was close to an interception. Then he had the interception um, during the game. I even highlighted this too, was coming out of USC. I think he had 13 passes defense. So he's had a knack for getting his hands up and just knocking balls down. Um, I think he had, six or seven coming into the game i believe and then he got his hands on one and then picked off the other so it was only a matter of time until he had an interception because he was really good at, at doing that coming out of usc whether it was at the just the, the line of scrimmage or uh, dropping back in zone or man like he was had a knack for his passes defense so 
Mm-hmm. He's definitely coming into his own too. So to, for him to show that consistency, um, it's going to be hard to, to let him go. I mean, I think we had on the breakdown, a couple of breakdowns ago, we were talking about whether he would stay or go. I mean, it's hard to justify like letting him go right now because if he continues to put on some solid performances, especially against an offensive line like the Texans where he can wreak havoc, it's going to be hard to, to let him go. But, I mean, if another team picks him up, he's going to get himself a nice contract and I can see him being productive because he's still relatively young into his career. Yeah, I mean, letting young pass rushers go, especially as they look like they're hitting their prime or continuing to ascend, you don't do that. And for him to make game-changing plays, whether it's the strip sack against the Bengals and both of his sacks that game or the interception here you know, that led to a touchdown, incredible stuff. So, you know, a few more games, and I think he can really earn himself a nice paycheck by playing the Texans. And, you know, the Raiders exactly aren't exactly that great at their line and the Broncos aren't exactly a lot great with their line. So he's got a few games to go where he can really earn himself some money. And at this rate, if you're a guy who makes plays and you and it changes the game for this team and he almost won the game for the Chargers with that pick, you know, yeah, bring him back. So I love it. Um, I'm really excited to see what they do against the Texans. I don't know who's going to be there at this point. Justin Herbert should be in a bubble as long as he can play. I think we'll be all right. Um, but as far as the defense goes, I'm excited to see what they do. So, um, Gavino, thank you again for joining me. As always, this is really cool. I hope you guys appreciated this. Um, I like watching this stuff, especially when I have no time to. Tomorrow, I will have more time to finally watch things. So maybe I won't be blind into everything. Um, but, but Gavino, where can they find you? What are you up to? And what are you doing this holiday season? Yeah, so I recently dropped a two-round mock draft. Um, mm. So that can be found on, char- on Charger Wire or um, my Twitter, which is Gavino Borquez. Um, I linked that to, to my Twitter, um, upgrade both sides of the ball. So that's promising. Okay. They address, uh, some positions of need, um, in this mock draft. So again, I'm gonna start doing a thing called uh, two round Tuesday, uh, where oh. I two round mock draft. Uh, I'm going to start dropping some scouting reports too on there. Um, yes, the chargers are trending towards making the playoffs, knock on wood. Um, so if they do, they're just going to continue to play into January. And then before you know it, the off season is going to be here. So this will give you guys a better idea of who they might be targeting. Cause again, there's a lot of prospects, a lot of promising prospects that could also help the, the team too. Mm-hmm. No, I can't wait. Um, I could guess which way you went, but I'm not gonna, I'm gonna leave it up to the viewers to go find your articles. All right. Well, awesome, man. I appreciate it guys. Everyone who's listening, enjoy your holidays. Hope they win against the Texans. If they don't, I won't do any breakdowns. I'll just go cry. Uh, my two round Tuesdays will just be me drinking two rounds of alcohol on that Tuesday if they lose to the Texans. So, um, <laughs> all right, guys, take care, enjoy your holidays, and as always, bolt up.